I know some of these words. Oh, hey, just uh, catching up on some reading. Anyway, if you want to see how I built this amazing hidden pop-up behind the couch table thing, follow along. It's been great, actually. We've been using it for about a week, and it's been great when guests come over to just hide some of the controllers and some of the things we don't want on the coffee table. So, yeah, follow along. If you have any tips or tricks, leave them in the comments. I appreciate them. I read them all, and let's get at her. As you can tell, I was using walnut. So I started off by just grabbing a sheet of spare walnut that I had from a different project and marking out my rough length of what I wanted. I knew from the couch that I wanted it to fit right up to that window. So kind of a custom size here, but took it over to the chop saw, cut it down, brought it to the table to cut it in half just so that I had more manageable pieces for the joiner, you know, going through the normal milling process. So brought it to the joiner, which I just installed a helix head. That thing is awesome. Um, would recommend but makes it very smooth got to see some of this beautiful sapwood here on the edge then took it over to the planer and ran it through kind of in a staggered step here just so I could make sure that every piece was running through would be the exact same uh, thickness and I ran these through until they got to about three quarters of an inch then brought it back over to the table saw just to rip down that last edge so everything was nice and flat and parallel and square all of the above next I was able to lay out all of the boards taking a look at the grain, making sure to alternate the grain, but still having a nice pattern that I liked. Then I just kind of came through on each board on each side and labeled these one through three, just so that when I take them apart and look at them, I can very easily put them back, knowing that I have the grain in the right order that I wanted this whole time. Also, I knew that I was going to have to cut some of these in half so that I could put in that hidden pop-up drawer, so I wanted to make sure that I labeled both sides. And then with that, since everything was lined up, I also just wanted to get my marks between these two woods so that when I put dowels in there for alignment, I knew exactly where I needed to drill. So that's what those lines are for. At this point, I took my square and I just started measuring where I thought this drawer would be best. I used the cut line from board one to two as one of those cuts. And then I measured from board two to three so that I could determine how big of a drawer I wanted what looked the best, knowing that I wanted some space on this on the left side here that wouldn't have any movement and be a solid flat surface. So drew those lines up and as you can kind of see it goes from board two to three and then it runs down the middle of board three. And yes you can use this board as a square edge since it has been squared. Makes it easy. So there you have it, that's going to be that drawer that pops up. And I sat here for the longest time trying to figure out how the heck I'm going to do this, but yeah, just going to rip down board three into the proper size, and then I'd be able to cross cut those middle sections so that I have a drawer face. And if none of that made any sense, then I guess you can just sit here and watch for the next 10 seconds and you'll understand exactly what I mean. But we got that board cut in half, three was cut in half, so now we kind of have four boards here. And with that separated, I don't know why I sat here trying to figure out how I'm going to cut that drawer face out. Like, I don't have the proper tools to just chop those boards. So, like, come on, bud, figure it out. Well, finally figured it out. And I even decided to use a stopping block here so that board two and three were both cut to the exact same length so that I didn't have to worry about any alignment or one being a little too long. Uh, just by eyeballing it. So I cut both of these for board two and three here and then actually flipped them around and cut the other side out so that gave me just my drawer face. And again if any of that is not making sense hopefully following along with the video here it'll start to piece together for you. So just sliding the two and three blocks into their respective slots. The two and the three markings that I put on there really just help to know which face goes up so that the grain still lines up. And then I can slide these blocks back and then you can see exactly how that drawer face is going to slot inside. And then you can picture how that would go up and down, kind of be hidden because all the grain matches. So looks good. That is going to be the hole. That's where the drawer is going to sit inside. And then this is going to be the drawer face. Perfect, it looks good, I think we're done here. So now what we can do is get our um, doweling jig that we have and 
we'll be able to start doing some glue up. Now these dolls I'm using are only going to be for alignment. Obviously gluing these edges up will be completely strong enough. And this is just a side table, so it'll be plenty of strong even without the dowels in there. But like I said, just putting them in there so that we can align everything really easily makes the glue up go a lot easier. Speaking of glue up, there's not really much to say about it. You glue the pieces together. Nothing too special about it. Let's just, uh, let's keep going. Let's just skip this. Once everything was kind of glued together here, I did take a rag and some water just to try to wipe as much of this glue squeeze out as possible. It makes the sanding process and the finishing process just so much easier. And then when it was all dry, I was able to take this and just run it through the table saw just to square up those edges. You can see there's a little bit difference there from when I was cutting out the drawer. Um, it did slide things in a little bit more, but that's okay. That's why we had that rough cut length. At this point, I set the tabletop off to the side and got my tracks out and some spare plywood and started cutting four different pieces that are going to make up the shell of this table. Once those are all cut, I was able to lay them out and again, this is just a side table so I didn't use any glue here and this isn't really going to be visible since it's going to be up against my wall and the couch so the only side that might be visible is if you walk behind the couch, which that just doesn't happen. So again, didn't use any glue, but I did use my 18 gauge brad nail here to secure this. Actually used quite a few brad nails, probably too many brad nails, but it ain't going anywhere. Then flipped it around and did the exact same thing and probably threw in another 20 of them here. Just to make sure everything was secure. Then I was able to take this, flip it up and just secure that last piece in there again. Just throw a bunch in there. I did get a little bit smarter though. I, I used this clamp here to help hold that in place so that I could nail the one side and then I was able to flip it around, nail in the other side. That clamp was just used to get a couple of those nails in place and then I could move it out of the way so I could just go to town. And here we go. Now we have our box and I can put my tabletop up on top just to see how everything lines up. And everything was looking good until about this point when I saw that I had screwed up. So I did not account for my right side of the cabinet. I accounted for one of my sides, but not the other side. So as you can see, when I line everything flush up here, exactly that width of the left side of the cabinet, very frustrating, but I decided to keep my mistake. So I just took another piece of walnut and cut it to the exact same length that I needed here and that we can sand down or trim down later. So got some glue together and just kind of clamped this together. It might look a little weird, but that's okay. I wanted to keep that where it was. I didn't want to take apart my box and trim down anything there. So I thought that I would just add this piece here and, and make my mistake visible. It can be a constant reminder of what I can do better or something. Now, if I was building this for someone, absolutely, I probably would have fixed it correctly. But as you can see, then I just take this tabletop through. I ran it through the planer one time so that it would take down all of the glue and it would flush up that side there again after this would get a nice sanding. But I don't need to show you all that. At this point, I could take this jig and I can do some pocket holes. This is what's going to attach the top to my cabinet. So I did two pocket holes on each side and then four on the, the top and bottom, the, the wider pieces. Once those are all drilled out, we can take the top and set it on the table saw just to get everything nice and flush and lined up. And then I took a screw and put it in the pocket hole already to start. So all I had to do was maneuver my drill inside and screw it on. I think at this point I only put a couple on there expecting that I would have to take off the top to do some of the internal work, um, but that wasn't the case. I could have put all of them in right now. So here we have everything kind of put together. The first look at how this is going to get placed. Now after that glue up, everything was a little bit tighter together and this did not fit at all. I was trying to squeeze it into place, didn't fit whatsoever, so I knew that I was going to have to take this and just edge out some of this. So got my hand planer, 
tried to trim some of this down just a little bit. I didn't want to run it through a saw because I thought I would take too much off. And then a sander just to make sure that everything was nice and flat there. Now I did that on all four sides just to give myself a little bit of room all around there. This probably isn't ever going to fit perfectly in there just because of rubbing. So brought it back, placed it, thought it looked pretty good. And at some point it slid down a little bit too far and just couldn't get it out. It was a little tough. So ended up having to just let it sit there and then it fell super. All right, with that top done, now we can move on to building the sides of the drawer. So again, milled up some wood, which I spared you from watching, milled up the wood, got the back in place and then the two sides. So this is the drawer that's going to pop out of the cabinet when you push down on it this is going to pop up. So I wanted everything to be walnut. Everything that you could visually see from this, I wanted to be walnut. So just kind of laying everything out here, making sure that it's going to look how I want it to. Brought the top back over to see how that would get placed. And you can see that there is a gap up on top, but that's okay. That is going to be um, trimmed down. Those sides were longer than they needed to be. So here, just gluing up that back piece so that everything is going to fit properly and making sure that I'm, again, making those grains how I want them to be. Had to, this is what happens when you don't mark them. So there you go. All right, with that glue up, it is all done. So now I need to install the drawer slides. So these drawer slides were, I believe, 20 inch drawer slides. These were left over from when I made my uh, dresser changing table. So I said, you know what, this will still work. I didn't need them to be the perfect size. It's never going to open the full 20 inches, but that's okay. These are spares and I said, good enough. So what I did here is I placed the back onto the drawer slides and then I took these edges and place them next to it. This made sure everything was nice and flush, that everything would have room for when it slides up, that it's not going to run into the shelf at all. So again, this is just a kind of layup, and as you can see, that top now does line up with everything, which is perfect. So this is kind of your inside drawer. If you could think of it pulling out, it's actually just gonna get pushed up. So here we're just gonna add some glue um, use your patent pending finger to smear it all on there nicely. And then what I like to do, um, making sure that I don't get any glue on the inside as that's a little bit harder to clean up, I take my side edge and I kind of start a little bit higher than I need to and slide it down so that I can make sure any extra glue goes to the back side. And then again, doing the same thing on this side, adding the glue, sliding that down into place, and then we can get our clamps and we can clamp this up and let that dry. At this point, those slides are not attached at all. Um, just using that purely so that we can understand where this glue up needs to happen. And so that we can make sure everything is still completely square at this point. Um, very critical that this is all square since there is a very confined space that this uh, needs to go into. If any of those are not square, then when it slides up, you're gonna get a lot of rubbing. So when that glue up is dried, then we can flip it upside down. We can get these drawers installed here. I used the top of it to push it in so I knew where the top of the drawer slides would be. And then it's just really getting them screwed in here. So started in by screwing in the right side, got one into the top, pulls able to pull that slide down and get the other one there. So once you get that one slide in there, then I did the other one. You don't need to see me screw in both of them. But at that point, I was able to take this and take it over too and make sure that everything fit. So slides fit in there okay. And we can finally see like, how does how's this gonna act sliding in there? And, and everything fit really nicely, actually. Once it was in there, it was pretty clear though that those slides don't have anywhere to attach on that backside. So with this in place, you can kind of see once I let it drop down, it to attach it it would definitely not work so i had to create create i had to put together just some blocks to make that flush out to the edge so this is exactly what i did just found some scrap wood made some blocks so that they come right to that edge of the drawer this will allow those slides to secure to those and then everything becomes nice and flush and allows us to slide that up so at this point i came back pulled those drawer slides off and just started attaching them it does not matter where on this block they got attached. So 
I didn't have to worry about measuring or anything. As long as they're on this block, things will work out. Great, so we got all four of them attached now. I put some cards on the one just because it was off just a little bit, so I needed a little extra width there. But So now I can slide this in there and just make sure that those blocks, when they're pressed up against the back of the cabinet, that everything is kind of in place and this still slides up exactly as it should. The hard part here was just making sure that everything was lined left and right. When I was trying to bring it up, I kept hitting the edges on the side, so it took a second to get everything perfectly lined, but once it did, it slid up perfectly. So then I was able to grab some clamps and clamp the blocks to the back and just drill in some screws. Once that was done, I was able to kind of just set this down, put my top on where I would expect it to be, and you can see there's a pretty big gap there, but that's to be expected. With these clips that I'm using that will hold this together, you need to be able to push that top down so that it can unlock and have the gas strut push this up. So we need to be able to account for this little bit of a gap of pushing this down to unlock this clip. So as you can see, there's a little gap there where my fingers are. That is exactly what we need to account for so that we can continue to push down. And that's just what I'm measuring here is, do we have enough of a gap when I push this down that I can push it down far enough? And there was. So with that said, we can move on to this glue up. It looks like everything is in the right spot, so we can glue this top down. Now what I did here was glue around the edges, but I did use this super glue with the accelerator spray that I wanted to put just in the four corners so it would kind of hold it down so that I could move it and get clamps on there. So with that super glue now in the four corners, I took my top, flipped it upside down, and took that accelerator spray and just kind of sprayed on those four corners so that I could press this down. Now I held this down for, I don't know, maybe 10 seconds or so, and then my phone died. So in that process, I did move this over to my table saw and pushed up from the bottom so I could get clamps on this to really secure this down. Kind of looked like this. Now, I came through here and took all the clamps off, and this was kind of that nerve-wrecking moment because things are glued up, things are secured. If this doesn't shut even a little bit, then we got problems. So this was kind of my big test of the first time with the glued up top, everything glued together, is this going to slide down? And it did for the most part. There was a corner that was rubbing, but that's not that bad. So I moved on to installing the gas strut so I could see if it would pop up. Now these struts came with this 10 millimeter ball that I was able to install on the bottom here. This will not be seen because of my drawer bottom that will be right above that. So I installed that, put this gas strut on just so I could kind of see how this is going to play. Now when I push this down, it sits right there. So I'm only pushing a little bit, it's not getting the full force. And so you can see there's still a little bit of rubbing. but. Let's get that fully installed. So what I did is I took this entire drawer and I pushed it up against my wall, as you can see here. Then I used a clamp so that I could clamp that drawer flush with the top. And then I installed another block, kind of like my drawer slides, but a little bit thicker so that that strut can be pushed all the way up. Again, leaving just a little bit of space so you can push it down. But then once that was screw was in there halfway, I was able to pull this out, let that gas strut expand so that I could really screw down that, that block right where it needs to be. This way I know that I can push that down all the way, leaving just a little bit of space for that. So with that all that compression, let's see how that works. And it worked really well. There's still probably a little bit of rubbing that I'll need to go through, but for the most part, that 10 pound strut has plenty of power to push this thing up. Moving on, we can start working on getting that thing secured down. So here I'm screwing on the top of my clip, and if you don't know what clip I'm talking about, you should have watched the whole video. I'm just kidding. I got the video up in the corner now. This is the clip that I'm using so that when you push it down, it locks it. So that piece that I just held in my right hand, that's what I'm securing onto the drawer right now. I'm putting those on the drawer so that I can get them flush with the back, and then I'm able to take a block, which you'll see later, and, and make sure that everything's going to line up. So here, you didn't really need to measure anything. I didn't say it needs to be a certain amount of distance from the edges. I just kind of picked a spot that I thought looked symmetrical so that I could add two of them kind of in the middle area. And then using that block, just making sure that those edges are flush with that backside. So again, I got the two of them in there, have no idea where they are, but that's okay because I was able to mill up this block 
which will get screwed in there, but then I can mark exactly where the middle of those clips are so that I can take the receiving end and put that right in line as well. So that block that I'm screwing them onto will also get attached to the back end as well. And then that's what you're going to be pushing the drawer into, which will receive those balls. Now, I did two of them here. And as I got done with the second one, I thought to myself, I don't know if two of them are going to be enough. So I added a third one just to be safe. So here you can see those three. I'm kind of mimicking what it would look like by moving the block, but in real reality, that block would be screwed to the back and it would be the drawer that's moving into that. But since I measured out perfectly those three, I knew exactly where it was gonna be. So with that block screwed into place, I can now kind of test this out. So this is flush to the top, pushing it down, unlocks it, and that gas strut opens it up. So, man, doesn't get much better than that, does it? At this point, I was able to move on to installing the backside, and I really wanted that gas strut and everything in place so I knew exactly where the top would bottom out, and then I can make that bottom drawer flush with the rest of it. So got that into place, and then was able to install these backsides. Now I went for just gluing on these spare pieces of wood onto the side of the drawer, so that really this bottom shelf was kind of a floating shelf. Now it was snug in there pretty good, but my thought process was if I ever want to be able to get in to see the internals or fix something like that, I'd want to be able to pull that bottom drawer piece off. So I didn't want that specifically glued to the sides. So it will rest on these things, but after the process and having used it for a while, that bottom is not moving at all. So here, just using these hand clamps to make sure that there's some pressure there to allow those blocks to dry, but that will be plenty of strength. So while that was drying, I actually decided that I would come and cut out a hole into the top so that I could put in one of these tabletop plugs, if you will. It has two plugs, two USB, and so I traced it out onto this drawer top, cut a hole in here, and then got my uh, jig, just a battery jig, and cut everything out. Now I needed to go through here with a chisel just a little bit to make sure everything was nice and flush. And once that was done, this thing kind of slid in there perfectly. And I was hoping putting it right to the edge of where my you know mistake was that maybe it wouldn't draw as much attention, but you definitely still can see it, that's okay. But that plug sit in there really nice. So I was able to move on to the finishing. I used a polyurethane rattle can, spray can, whatever people call it these days. I had this left over from an old project, so I just sprayed this back and forth in a nice easy motion for that first layer. But you definitely want to be careful, as you can see on this right side here. I sprayed and was a little too close, and you can actually see a little cloud area there, which I, I kind of blowed on. I was like, oh man. But that will come out in kind of some sanding and buffing, so it wasn't too bad. So going over this for one full coat, I let that dry. I think this can said it only needed 15 minutes, but I think I let that dry for like an hour. Then I came back and did a whole nother coat, again, doing really nice, easy motions. I think you have to be a foot or two away from this. So got that whole second coat on there, let that dry actually overnight. So came back the next day and I actually had some like 1200 grain sandpaper laying around. I've heard other people using like uh, paper bags or something, but I used this and just went over thing over everything really easily just to get everything sanded down, any of those air bubbles, you know, wiped down, and it gives it a really nice gloss, a really nice smooth finish. And so I think I personally will always use the 1200 grain sandpaper. And once all the sanding was done, I then took some water again and sprayed it and just a rag to wipe everything off, making sure that I get any of that dust that was on there from sanding to get cleaned off there. Um, and then last but not least was just installing the plug, which simply consisted of screwing in two screws. And then this build was done. Well, there you have it. If you have any questions about the build at all, leave them in the comments. I will read them all and try to answer anything I can. This was a really fun build for me. I didn't have any plans, so it was nice to just go out in the shop and build something on the fly. Appreciate you guys watching, and I'll see you next time. Until then, I'm gonna get back to what I was doing.